Hello, good afternoon. So today I will be uh, creating a video regarding the discussion for the lesson 1, introduction to computer systems. So before I start, uh, let me give you the objectives or uh, what you will learn after this uh, uh, study or after this discussion for the lesson 1. The first one is the list the four parts of the computer system. And then we also have uh, we will also introduce or give examples of what an I.O. devices. So when you say I.O. devices, it is an input and output devices. And then we also name or we describe the three types of the storage devices. And, the, and then we will also distinguish or describe between the two categories of uh, computer software. And we also, we will be presenting the different shapes of a computer. So, what is a computer system? So, when we say computer system, it consists of four parts. So, we have the hardware, uh, the actual uh, machine, we also have the software, uh, the system that is being installed in the computer, and then the user, the, the computer user, the one who will uh, uh, utilize the hardware and the software. And then we also have the data. The data are those uh may it be word may it be uh, videos or uh, pictures or whatever data that you will be uh, uh, going to install or going to work out with that computer let's say for example uh, if you're going to make a report or a memo or a written report uh, whatever data or whatever uh, informations that you have or that you need to convert it into a computer printing or computer printed that is what you call the data so in every computer uh, that four parts are the are the most are the the most uh, basic part of a computer system so a computer system cannot be called if some some of the uh, 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 some of that content or some of that uh, what we call uh, parts is missing so it has to be the four parts of a computer system so in order for us to discuss each part we will go further in discussing or explaining each part so we will start with the hardware so when we say the hardware it is the physical device that make up the computer and hardware is any part of the computer or any part of the machine that you can touch so it's a tangible meaning to say uh, hardware is can be touched so you can touch the CPU the monitor the keyboard everything that you can touch everything that is physical that is the hardware part so no matter how big it is or no matter how are, go are you going to use it oh, that is part of a part of the computer system now uh, a computer hardware a computer hardware is consists of interconnected electronics devices so uh, it's either uh, that electronics devices is used to control the computer it may be input or output so later on we will discuss what are the input and the output of uh, hardware so uh, software on the other hand is is a set of instruction that makes the computer perform fast in other words uh, software tells the computer what to do so let's say for example if you're going to send the computer the instruction print the software will convert it into a language of a computer and then the printer will print so hardware is the the the, the hard hardware is the printer and then the software are those instructions that you need to install or that you need to instruct the computer on how they're going to process that instruction and user uh, user on the other hand are the computer operators so they are known to be as users so we as we are going to uh, operate the user so as we going to uh, process or convert whatever we are doing with the computers those uh, the, the user or the one who is utilizing or the one who is operating that device or that computer is what you call the users so that's a part of a computer system so if no users no user is utilizing the computers it's not a computer system anymore and then we also have the data so 
the data is consists of individual facts or bits of information so the computer reads and stores data of all kinds so whether again whether it's word numbers images or sound in the form of numbers so every information or every data that you are going to process or that you are going to input in the system is what we call the data so uh, there are there are uh, there are lots of example of data so again if it is word it is usually on that doc so document when it when it is numbers numbers can also be document but some some of the numbers uh, you can actually convert it into uh, a language which a computer can understand and then we also have the images the pictures and then the sounds it will be audio or a video and so that is that is actually the data that you need to use or that you need to uh, convert into information when you are when you are going to utilize the computer so what's inside the machine so there are uh, the computer itself the hardware are, has many parts so the critical components fall into four categories so we have the, pro the processor the device the processor that is where that that processor uh, can be found inside the CPU or the central processing unit. So there's a, some some of the computer uh, has a multiprocessor and some of the computer has only one core is what one processor only. And then we also have the input and output devices. So the input and output devices are those uh, devices that we are going to connect in the computer to make it work let's say for example keyboard so that we can input whatever instructions we need to load in the computer and then the printer is the output devices where you want to see or we where you want to see the output of the the, the documents you are typing you want to see how, how how it look like how it looks like in the printer so that's an output devices and then memory are are those a uh, part of the hardware that there are some memories which memory that is actually found inside the cpu and there are also some memory that is portable which is what you called uh the mm, a flash drive or extra storage or the hard disk those are examples of the memory and some of the memories are also uh, temporary memories now later on we will also discuss those kind of memory because uh, it is actually there's a big difference between uh, different types of memories we have the uh, the RAM the random access memory and then we also have the room the read-only memory and then we also have the storage now the processor so in order for us to discuss in order for us to further explain uh, what's inside the machine we will go uh, discuss each of that uh, each of the parts for you to be able to understand and for you to be able to understand further uh, its function and its capabilities so a processor is like the brain of the computer so it organizes and carries out instruction that comes from either the user or the, the software all the functions that you are going to input inside the computer must be processed by the processor so it is called the brain because without the processor all the functions and all the proce processes cannot be executed by a computer without a processor so uh, a processor is a very vital has a very vital uh, function when it comes to processing your instruction or processing anything that you want to uh, make or anything that you want to create out of that computer now how about the memory now the memory this is the picture of the processor now if you're going to open the cpu you can see that the processor is mounted inside the motherboard this is what you call the motherboard now in the middle of the motherboard there's a processor there which uh, has a very important uh, function when it comes to processing your instruction or processing uh, the data that you input inside the computer it actually it actually allows uh the input and output devices the, the the processes and how it can manage the functions of each instruction that you're going to install or that you're going to instruct in the computer and then the memory now uh, the memory is an electronic scratch 
pad inside the computer. So when you launch a program, it is loaded into and run from memory. So data used by the program is loaded to a memory for fast access. And your data is entered into the computer and it is also stored in memory, but only temporarily. So this is what you call, the one that I mentioned earlier, this is what you call the random access memory. So when you open your, when you if you have computer at home or if you have computer somewhere else, you can actually see the memory, the random access memory inside the, the motherboard. So this is the example of what a memory is or the temporary memory. So this memory is used to... Uh, used to guide you or used to help you in retaining uh, some of the functions. So let's say for example if you're going to uh, load applications from your laptop or from your computer, the one that helps you retain those memories temporarily are the random access memory or the RAM. So it's, dif it's different from the storage. It's different from the flash drive. It's different from the the hard disk because you can retain the memory there forever as long as you will not delete it. But in random access memory, it helps you uh, access the access the application software and the application system that you have inside your computer for fast access. Now, but those uh, the, this type of memory cannot retain. Uh, it only temporarily because once you close the computer, you cannot get those applications once again popping up into your uh, computer or into your uh, monitor. Now, we also have the input and output devices. So, a computer would be useless, of course, if you cannot interact with it because the machine cannot receive the instructions or deliver the result of its work. So, what are the examples of input devices? So, when you say input devices, it accepts data so you input you it has to be uh, it has to be inputted by the by the user so it accepts data and instruction from the user or from the another computer system so let's say for example mouse mouse is uh, once you click anything from the computer it sends data or it sends instruction to the computer that that's that's the that's the thing that you want to do the computer to make let's say for example if you uh, browse something and then you click uh, you click a pictures or you click the video the video will run because you give the instruction through the mouse that you want to watch or that that you are clicking that certain video and then we also have the camera the camera is also a type of input devices it can be input devices it can also be output devices at the same time uh, since uh, it can it, it it's either it's either you can view the video afterwards or you can actually use the video or use the webcam in order you you will input information through it but later on you can view it also at the same time so that's input and output devices and we also have the game or the the what we call this the joystick and then you also have the keyboard the keyboard is used to input you, you use to type any any words and then when you send it to the computer it will send the instruction on what on how the computer is going to operate those those instructions and then we also have the output devices so these are the output devices so we have it returns the process data to the user or to another computer system so let's say for example the monitor monitor is one of the example of output devices and then we also have the printer one of the uh, most commonly output devices and then we also have the mm, the speaker so when you type something into the computer and then if you want it to give you an output through the monitor it it shows and then when you want something to be print out through the printer if you want to see your pictures that you downloaded if you want to make it a hard copy then that's the output devices and then we, when you want to hear the the music that you recorded through the speaker so it's output already it's the result meaning the result of the process or the result of the instructions that you input through the input devices and then it shows afterward it give you the result or it give you the output so those those instruction will be uh, will be possible because of the base output devices the monitor and the, the printer and then the speaker and so many other output devices available in the computer system and then we also have the storage 
So when you say storage, it's a computer that can function with only processing, memory input, and output devices to be really useful. However, a computer needs a place to keep program files, related data when they are not in use. And the purpose of storage is to hold data permanently. So when you say storage, so these are example of the storage, the flash, the flash drive, the by the way, if you see USB, it's the type of port. But when you see flash drive, it is it is a storage where, where you can save your your whatever documents or whatever data that you need to save. And then that same goes with your hard 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 disk or the external storage. So that's the difference between the memory and the storage because when you see storage it can hold your data permanently not unless you delete it but the memory can help you open the documents can help or can help you open the the the, the, the applications whatever applications you want to open in the computer but it's only temporary so these are the example of the memory or the storage so we have the ram the random access the random access memory we have the disk, uh, the floppy disk before, which is not which is not available nowadays. We have the external hard disk, the flash drive, and the internal hard disk. So now we are going to uh, differentiate between. There are actually three major distinction between memory and storage. So when you say storage there is more room in storage than in memory as there are more room in the file cabinet than there is in the tabletop uh, what what do you mean by this so uh, there are a lot of uh, let's say for example uh, there are there are external memory now that is considered to be one TB and there are also some flash drive now that it also the memory is also 8, eight gig so when you say tabletop there is an example there about the file cabinet and tabletop. So the, the the mere example for this is when you're doing something, when you put it in the table, but after you're gonna get it. But when you say uh, storage, it can actually you can put it in the cabinet and then if you're going to use it, you're gonna get it from the cabinet. So that's it. The tabletop and then the cabinet. So the memory or the random access memory or are example of whatever you put things in the tabletop so that is not temporary oh, that is temporary whereas when you say a storage like external memory external drive or flash drive memory once you want to access that that once you want to access those files again you can actually get the files okay so we, the the example for this is when you open the computer when you open the computer and when you open those applications in the computer let's say for example ha mag open ka of pictures mag open ka video mag open ka facebook mag open ka chrome or the browser and then once it automatically or it accidentally shut down after you open your computer again Although some of it are actually pwede ni mo siya ma, there are actually, uh, pwede ni mo siya mabalik, but most of the time, you cannot bring all those applications in, put in, in place again because during that time, you're actually using the RAM access memory. You're, you're only using the RAM. However, when you type something on the computer, when you type such, when you type something on the computer, but then you you intentionally save that that work you put it in the trash you put it in the flash drive now when you shut down the computer later on you can access it again so that is so contents are retained in storage when the computer is turned off so that is what i mean so contents are retained in the computer in the storage when the computer is turned off whereas in the ram the programs or the data you put in the memory disappears when you shut down the computer. So it, it definitely shut down the com when you def when you accidentally shut down the computer. So there's no you cannot retrieve those applications to run again at the same time. Now, storage is very slow compared to memory, but it, it is much cheaper than memory. So storage is very slow compared to memory. Big because once you open it, sometimes especially when when your flash drive or when your when your storage is very full already, you have the hard time opening it. 
but the memory can actually hold a lot of applications at the same time so in the computer you can actually multitask the the one who is responsible for that is your memory so once you open multitasking or once you open multiple programs or multiple uh, applications at the same time, it can all actually allow you because of the fast access or because of the fast capability of your memory. That's it. So, but once you, once you actually uh, shut down your computer, the, the memory of those applications will, lost, will be lost again. So, it's, it's something like that. So... We will proceed to software. So software, software brings the machine to life. The ingredients that enables the computer to perform a specific task is software will consist of electronics instruction. So if we are going to uh, give an example of what the software is all about sa, 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 in a human being, the human being is the body, but the soul is actually the software the one that is makes it possible for us to talk the one that is makes possible us to feel those are actually the software so whatever instruction that we are going to let's say for example uh, uh i am thinking that i'm hungry so my the, the the software in my body will tells me to eat food so that's the instruction so that is the software but the one who eat the food is my mouth so that is actually the hardware so same goes with the computer so when i type something to the computer and when i give instruction to the computer the one that actually converted it or the one that that gives the instruction is is the software but the one that who is going to demonstrate the action is the hardware so the one that gives the instruction is the software and the one who will demonstrate that action is the hardware so there are two major categories of software so we have the system software and the we have the system software and the application software so when you say system software uh, these are the software that tells the computer how to how to use its own components so for example for this are the operating system so we have windows macintosh Linux, unix lenox android and ios so when you're going to start your computer or your cell phone or whatever it is once you st you start the software or once you, st you turn on your computer or your your phone or whatever it is the one that is helping you to boot that device is actually the os the one that makes your application software possible for you to use that is because of the operating system the operating system is very essential for any computer because it acts as the interface or the interpreter between the hardware and the application programs so it's the medium so the computer the computer in the middle the medium is the operating system and the and then the, the hardware or the computer hardware so when the application wants the hardware to do something it is the responsibility of the operating system to convert that into a machine language so that the machine can demonstrate or so that the machine can interpret what or the the the, op, the operating system can interpret what the machines needs to do so let's say for example if you're going to turn on the light on your house diba if you turn it on you cannot just touch the fluorescent or the bulb right away for it to turn on you're gonna use the switch so that switch is considered to be the operating system it's so it needs to have a modium or the, the the entity between the computer user and the computer to make it work so uh, a computer system or an operating system is the interpreter or the one that is interprets the uh, it interprets the hardware and the application program so that it can make an output or it can make an input so it communicates through the operating system so similarly when you uh, when you want the hardware to do something your request will be handled by the operating system so there are uh, uh, simi uh, there are actually uh, functions of operating system uh, there are actually four main functions of the operating system now later on if you are going to be a fourth year or third year uh, you can understand how the computer or how the operating system works but right now ang bits and pieces lang of what is an operating system 
And then there, are, there is also a system software, an example of system software, which is a network operating system. So it allows computers to communicate and share data across a network. So this is the example of uh, a network operating system. So a network operating system is usually if you're going to get inside a big, an internet cafe or uh, let's say for example a PLDT or a PON, they're actually using a network operating system wherein they're using a server. A server where it's an interconnected connection, interconnected devices, and nakakonnect siya sa ka main server, wherein uh, all the functions are being monitored or are being handled by a server. And then the, the, the software that is being used in that uh, server is a network operating system. So network siya, so interconnected devices. So when you say network, connected, interconnection. And then we also have the utility. So utility makes the computer easier uh, easier to use or to perform highly specialized functions. So when you say utility, these are the special um, operating system or system software that actually uh, dedicated to a certain function. So one example for this or example for this are the antivirus or some software that actually protect your system so we have the mcafee the abg the avera the avast so those are example of the kaspersky those are the example of the uh, utility software and then on the other hand we also have the second type of uh, software we have the application software this is, application software is what we are using most of the time so money ato ang those kind of software that we are most of the time dealing it or most of the time using it to perform our task especially now that we are actually online or we are in the pandemic so a computer so a computer software tells the computer how to accomplish a specific task such as word processing spreadsheets so these are the example of the application software i don't need to elaborate all this one because this is very basic already so word processing software you're going to use microsoft word or whatever document uh, document application software you have in your devices and then we also have the spreadsheet so spreadsheet is uh, uh, an excel an example of spreadsheet is an excel in microsoft office so if you need to compute or if you need to have formula built on it so you can use excel or the spreadsheet program so this is designed with numbers and then for payrolls or for us as teachers we use uh, excel to computer grades and then we also have the adobe photoshop or graphic software animation software so this is where you create your uh, videos this is where you create your uh, pictures edit, edit of pictures tarpaulins programs uh, uh, pamphlets or whatever uh, animations or whatever media or whatever uh, images you want to create you can use this as your application software in making your uh, data or in making your presentation more pleasant and then you, such program are essential on document design web designs and multimedia authoring and the game and movie productions and then these are some of the ex example of uh, application software so these are very common so we have ms access this is where you can actually access your uh different different emails so if you have plenty of different emails from gmail from yahoo from aol or from some other email address you can actually manage your email address nga usa na lang siya ka inbox so different email addresses different domain but one inbox so you can actually manage there your the way you answer your emails or the way how you are going to prioritize the email addresses and then we also have the ms excel the one that i've mentioned in earlier front page the ms group we have the ms info path although some of these are not really quite uh common when it comes to our daily task so uh outlook can also be the one when you want to have uh outlook is the when you have plenty of email addresses and then you want to manage it by yourself and then if you want to uh, make uh, uh, make uh, let's say make a certain uh, program or make a certain 
uh, inbox or make a certain account wherein all your email addresses are into one and then you also have the powerpoint for presentation and then ms project publisher and then ms word the most common uh, application software we're using nowadays and then you also have the web browser so there are plenty of web browsers available today i don't have to read this anymore anyway this has this is already indicated in your module and then when you say web browser so web browser are there are lots of uh, browsers so we have chrome we have uh, mozilla we have opera and then we have safari and so many other and so many other uh, browsers so once you need to connect to the internet once you want to go to google and once you want to go to uh, any other any other uh, web pages or um, a content in the internet you need to go through to, to the browser so uh, the shape of computers today so the shape of the computers today we are actually uh, there are different kind and sizes of or ranges of power of computers nowadays so what we see most of the time is just the desktop computer the laptop but however computers are actually comes in different sizes and comes in different ranges of power so the computers fall into one of the follow following categories so uh, actually the banks the uh, the bpos the business processing outsourcing companies uh the factories and so many other and so many other big companies are actually using computers but not the ordinary computers that we are actually using most of the time so the computer fall into a different following category so we have supercomputer this is the computer that be, that performs uh, at highest operational rate for computers because especially if it is business it the the, the profit the processing the manufacturing are lies with that computer uh, supercomputer so traditionally supercomputer have been used for scientific and engineering applications so that must be handled at very very large databases so kanang nasa kanang companies or even militaries or uh, big companies like Intel or big companies like uh, Facebook, Google, and whatever co big companies that you, are, you can think about, they're actually using supercomputer because whatever data that they have is very important the, and then it needs to be processed very fast. So let's say for example in the banks, uh, can you just imagine uh, any, any banks can actually uh, can actually operate even if you're not uh, and operates 24 24 7 so when you say 24 7 24 hours in seven weeks uh, 24 hours in seven days so you can actually uh, withdraw your money and then it actually uh deducted in your in your account so the one that is responsible for that are the supercomputers the one who, who monitors your accounts the one that is giving the inventory real time so if you have the ATM and then you're going to withdraw 500 pesos from your ATM, automatically the accounts you have in the system in that certain bank is actually uh, changing it or is actually updating it real time as well. So the one, the, the one that is responsible for all those are their servers. So that is what we call supercomputer with super fast memory. And then these are the example of the supercomputer. This one, this picture. And then the second example of the shape of computer is the mainframe computer so the mainframe computer is actually almost the same with the supercomputer however uh, these are generally very large compared to supercomputer because the processing and the power level of re reliability are actually different so the mainframe computer are mostly used with uh, a needed high storage so manufacturers don't always use the term mainframe to to refer to mainframe computer instead they're calling it commercial use computer large or small so a uh, mainframe computer are usually bigger compared to supercomputer because they needs they need a large amount of memory they need a lar large amount of super uh, super duper 
uh, storage because of the way the mainframe are actually uh, being processed or operates. So, most of the mainframe computers are those that belongs to the kanang with so much data like our government so much data with with the nso and all of that but in the supercomputer mangod when you say supercomputer those data that needs super fast processing but the mainframe computer kanang nasa atong sss or pagibig they're actually using mainframe computer because of the vast uh, vast or major uh, storage that they need in that certain press in that certain um uh, certain storage or certain type of computer so there are some of the uh, example for this so you just need to read it and then you can also you can also search it on the internet so that you can find more understanding and further explanation of what is the different types or what is the different sizes of the computer we also have a mini computer so a mini computer fills the space between a mainframe and a micro com computer. So, uh, when you say mainframe and micro computer, what comes in between is the mini computer. So, the mini computer acts, although it is a smaller, but uh, mini computers are mainly used as small or mid range server operating business scientific and scientific applications. So, mini computer is acts as the secondary. Uh, large computer next to uh, main mainframe computer. So there are industries or there are some of the business operations or any organization that is using mini computer nowadays. So instead of using bulk uh, mainframe computer, they are go they are using mini computer as their storage when it comes to processing their businesses. So those uh, middle range type of business. Microcomputer is the most common computers that we see in our laboratories, in your houses, or any other places in the in the store or in the internet cafe. So that is what we call microcomputer or the desktop computer. So the desktop computer, this is what it looks like. Na atay monitor, we have the the CPU, and then we have the the mouse and the keyboard. The 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 typical type of computer that we see most of the time. So, it's a computer with a central processing unit as the microprocessor and then designed for individual use. It is actually for, in, for personal use. And then, microcomputer is smaller than a main, mainframe computer or a mini computer. So, when you say uh, microcomputer, the CPU includes the random access memory, the one that I have, I have explained a while ago. And then, we also have the read-only memory or the storage. And then, the memory, the input and output. So, when you see input and output, we have the monitor. We have the keyboard as input uh, input devices. The printer as output devices. The webcam as output and input devices. And so many other uh, interconnecting devices that we need to connect it in the computer or the, the, the wires and then the motherboard those are part of the computers now laptop laptop is also a type of uh, is also a type of computer with with different shapes of course a laptop is supposed to be a personal computer that is small enough to sit in a person's lap that's why laptop so it's on the top of your lap and it is designated or it is designed for mobile uses so when you see mobile you can use it at home you can use it at the bus you can use it at the plane so it's portable that's why it is a smaller because the first thing that that you can that comes into your mind when it is laptop it is portable you can bring it anywhere of course and then we also have uh, we will be differentiating between the supercomputer and the mainframe computer on the basis of the following field. So, I don't need to discuss this anymore. You just can read this. Everything is actually discussed this. So, size. What is the difference between the supercomputer and the mainframe computer? I have, uh, teeny, uh, I have discussed it uh, a little bit earlier. And then we also have... Uh, the memory of what is the supercomputer and the mainframe computer, the calculation power, the working principles, and then the energy consumption. So, there are actually six, I think six, Nisha. There are actually six different uh, capacity between the, between the supercomputer and the mainframe computer. The first one is the size. Of course, supercomputer is smaller than mainframe computer. However, 
uh, supercomputer has actually a, a more fast and then uh, more sophisticated system compared to the mainframe. Mainframe computer is actually bigger than software computer. However, it is actually bigger in storage and then we have the memory and then the calculation power the working principle the energy consumption uh, so it depends on the size so we also have the field of use so what are the uses of supercomputer where does it applies to and then uh, what is the main frame computer and when where where it usually uh, being used whether it be in the BPO, in the banks, or whatever, wherever it is uh, efficient when it comes to application and when it comes to its function. So I hope you understand what I am just explained uh, earlier. I know I'm quite fast. I'm quite fast in talking. So if you have any questions or clarifications, please don't hesitate to ask me questions. And then please read this uh, read this and then read this material and then I hope that you can watch this video as well. Now, if there are any questions or clarifications, don't forget to send me a message in our group chat. And you stay safe. I hope to see you soon. Thank you.